Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. Today I'm gonna take a look at the Creative Sound Blaster A64 value. And the reason why is I want to upgrade the RAM on it the, for the MIDI fonts. So as you can see here, we got an A64 installed. And here we have the synth. And right now we have general MIDI. So we got 512k of memory and 512k available. The value card only has half a megabyte. So we can play, play us MIDI in here. So now if we replace that with uh, this one, I installed for MT32, it's gonna sound a little bit bad I think, I think there's some hanging note, I'm not sure. So now I got 485k of fun 12k available, so let's play this again, should sound a bit different now. And I'm pretty sure that the hung note, I'm not sure it's supposed to be like that. But the point is it sounds different because we've got different sound fonts here installed in the synthesizer bank here. So I can also use this one, but I don't, uh, that uses all of the memory, if I want to LK, and uh, I don't really hear that much of a difference to general MIDI. Also install this one on the user synthesizer, which is this 2G MG SMT. Uh, it's a two megabyte, I think, it takes up two megs, and we can't use that because if we do like that, we're out of memory. So if we had two megs of memory on the card, we could probably use that sound font. Uh, so that's what I want to do. I want to upgrade this card because we're going to have a look at it. But the PCB actually allows you to have a bigger memory module, a two megabyte one. So here is the 864 value card. And over here we have the RAM chip that I want to replace. So we can see two pads over here. And those extra pairs are going to be needed for a new ship. This is a 40 pin ship, so 20 pins per side. The new ship is 42 pins. And the way this works is that over here, this pin and this free pad here is right now 5 volts. And over on this side here, we got ground pin out here and we also got ground here. And the way this works is that you can move this resistor over here to the pad up here. That will remove the ground from this pin on this ship and make it a address line instead. And the same thing goes for this resistor over here. If we move that the two over here, this address line right now is used here where it says R16 on pin number 5. But on the new ship that is not connected. So if we move that over to here, we remove the 5 volts here. So we've got 5 volts out here that the new ship will use. And this zero ohm resistor mode over here will reroute the address signal to this pin here. And right now it's 5 volts, so we'll build the second one from the corner on the new ship. That's how we get one more address pin. So I'm not the first one to have done this mod. Uh, this mod has been done by at least someone on Vogon. Plus there is a Russian YouTube video on how to do this. So if you're, well you speak Russian. You might want to watch that, so I will link both the Vogan thread and I will link the Russian video. But uh, what you need is basically a donor, or you can just buy some loose ships I suppose. But I picked this one because it seems to be what people have used before. So this is a 8 megabyte 72 pin stick. So these are 2 megabyte modules, 42 pin. So I looked up the data sheet from this ship and for the ship on the card to make sure it's pin compatible. So this is an NEC ship, 42.18165.60 nanoseconds, just like the old one is 60 nanoseconds. So 
So what we have to do obviously is to get this ship, one of these ships off this here and uh, this ship off here and replace it and move those resistors so we don't fry the new ship obviously and so we can address it all. So here we have the data sheets of the memory ship. To the left here we got the original one on the card which is an NN514265A and to the right here we have the replacements from NEC are 4218165. I picked this one because it seems to be almost identical to what people had used before. But I suppose anything with the same pin out and uh, that should be electric compatible should work. So this the one to the left is a 40 pin package and the one to the right is a 42 pin. So you check from pin one here, we can see we got the uh, four IO pins in here and the same here and then uh, we got VCC and so on. So if you check down here, everything is identical until we get to we get down to 16 here. 16 here is uh, on this ship is an address line and on the new ship it's not connected. And the thing is when we move the resistor here that right now connects this ship on the left old one to VCC on pin 20. On pin 20 here we've got an address line. So if we move that resistor, this is located somewhere around here on the board. That will remove VCC from the A3 line and when we place a new position it will reroute this not collect connected line on a new ship to the pin A3. And the same thing when we move the resistor on the other side is so if we did disconnect ground from A4 and we will connect up A2, A4 to the proper address line. So that's how we get one more address line. So I placed the memory module on my board heater here. It's gonna help me hold it in place and I can apply some heat. Right now the module is about 55 to 60 C. So we're gonna remove one ship here. I'm gonna add just a little bit of flux to it. So the board is on the board heater here, so the PCB is about 70 centigrade right now. So we're gonna add some uh, flux again here, so we can remove this ship. We just need a very small amount here. I'm gonna clean the pad. Mostly I want to get rid of the flux from the not used pads on the side there since they oxidized a bit. I'm gonna have some, some flux here before we tin the bed.
So now we'd like to move these resistors into the new place. I'm just gonna add some flux on the new pads they're gonna use. So we're ready to add uh, the new 2 megabyte chip here. So we're gonna flux pads. Add the chip. So I cleaned it, cleaned it up and checked it. I had, uh, I think it was number three from the left there that uh, didn't take contact. So I manually touched it up with an iron. So that works now. Otherwise, I think it's fine. It looks good enough. It's hard to see probably on camera. I have a microscope on the way so we can actually look at things closer and in a better view in the future. But uh, I can't see anything that is not connected and anything I expected. I, like I said, I touched one up and uh, checked it for continuity. So what's left to do is to try the card out, I suppose. So we are ready to try the card out. It's back in the motherboard here. So I'm gonna fire it up. Let's see, we have uh, the car detected. Let's load DOS. I'm not gonna, gonna run Diagnose here. And uh, the Russian guy did the same thing and this, this there's a built-in memory test here, which is convenient. Now, since we replace the ship, we can see if it's detected and we can make sure it works. I suppose the test writes to it and reads it back and checks if that's if it's correct. Yeah, we, we detected two megabytes here. Yeah. So now the test is running. So good we saw the memory at least. Let's just hope it's not dead. I haven't tested that stick to begin with, which probably should do, but yeah. DRAM, DRAM on audio card tested successfully, so that seems to be fine then. So let's abort this test here and boot Windows. Uh huh. So my user isn't loaded now, apparently. The one we couldn't load before, and it's 247 kilobytes free of uh, available of 2048 so that's correct what? let's try that yeah now everything is free two megabytes that should use half a megabyte and that yeah that's one and a half free so that adds up that uses almost nothing so yeah let's try the one that takes almost all the memory we didn't try before and start the uh See what it is. Needy creative MIDI. So let's try it. Well, it sounds a bit different. Yeah, it's, it sounds different. 
This one still probably sounds drunk. I think it was that one. Yeah, still on the, that weird stuck note. But then anyway, we can use two megabytes now. So now I would like to try some games, but before I do that, I downloaded and replaced the user synth with uh, another one. Two megabyte, one custom from Vogons. I want to test that. But we're gonna have general MIDI selected. I have configured Doom here to use general MIDI. So yeah, it was a normal general media here. So now I want to load this custom one. Supply that. And then I might doom again. It should sound different. So yeah, that is uh, my AVE 64 value upgrade from uh, 512k of uh, memory to 2 megabytes. So I can use bigger custom uh, font, sound fonts. So thank you for watching and uh, have a nice day. You can join us on our Discord server. We host public lands when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter-Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.